Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. 74 year old male patient presented to our ER with acute onset of diffuse abdominal pain started since 1 hour. In initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious and oriented, obeying to my commands. Primary survey, airway, patent, there is no pooling of secretions, there is no hoarseness of voice. Breathing, uh, saturation was 97%. Respiratory rate is 23 per minute and iron tree bilaterally equal. Uh, there is no use of any accessory muscles. Circulation part BP 140-80 mm mercury. Heart rate is 86 per minute. Uh, CRT less than 3 seconds. All peripheral pulses are felt equally. That time we inserted two large IV bore cannulas. Disability part GCS E4 V5 M6. Uh, pupils 2 mm bilaterally equally reactive. GRBS 130 mg deciliter. Uh, at that time, we assess the uh, pain score that is 7 by 10. So, we give the patient uh, PCM and paracetamol 1 gram IV stat was given. Exposure bar temperature was uh, normal. Nudging to primary survey, I am taking ABG initially. Uh, pH is 7.38, bicarbonate is 25, P PCO2 is 40, and there is no acid base, uh, disorder. Why was ABG taken for this patient? Uh, acute abdominal pain, uh, we want to roll out any acidosis mm. or uh, any increased creatine mm. or increased lactate. Mm. Mm. When uh, will creatine increase? In CKD patient. Uh, mm. CKD patients will they come kidney, with abdominal pain? Acute kidney injury. With, mm. uh, if any there is any renal colic, renal colic along with yeah. any obstructive feature uh, obstruction which is causing any problem with the renal functions that can increase the creat then uh, in any uh, thrombosis uh, means mm. uh, supreme syndicate thrombosis mm. or venous thrombosis lactate is increased mm. uh, uh, okay okay if the patient is coming with constipation mm -hmm. and abdominal pain what else will you check in abg Constipation is there because of uh, hypokalemia. hypokalemia. Anemia, mm. uh, potassium value can check. And one, one more electrolyte. Uh, sodium, magnesium. Uh, magnesium won't be seen in our ABG. Mm. If there is hyper increase in calcium, increase in calcium, calcium hypercalcemia can come with abdominal present with abdominal pain. Okay. Uh, so, how was this patient's ABG? ABG, uh, there is no acid base disorder. Uh, mm. Potassium is uh, 3.8 and lactate was uh, 2.8. Uh, initially, we done in our ER uh, point of care CBC HB showing 11 gram per deciliter. Uh, lactate is 2.8, slightly elevated, mm. and while we given uh, initially. Pain score was 7 by 10, so mm. give initially uh, PC, paracetamol. Again, reassess the pain was not decreasing. Uh, so, we again rechecked the uh, blood pressure, so it could decrease to 100 by uh, 60 millimeter mercury. Mm. Uh, so, we connect the patient to a um, cardiac monitor, mm. uh, and heart rate was also increasing to uh, 112 per minute. Mm. Then, we again check the uh, forelimb BP. Mm. Uh, both upper limb BPs are uh, same, it's 100 by 60 and lower limb BP is uh, 80 millimeter mercury. Okay. So, when will you call that there is a significant difference in blood pressures? Uh, more than 20 millimeter. More than systolic, uh, 20 uh, millimeters of mercury. Okay. Uh, then uh, we do a US abdomen fast was done. Mm. Uh, they are showing infra renal abdominal aortic aneurysm with a large heterogeneous. Uh, collection of blood surrounding the infrarenal aorta uh, suggestive of a ruptured aortic aneurysm. Okay. Uh, hmm. So, we have a case of aortic aneurysm rupture, rupture. in this patient. So, when where all can the uh, aortic aneurysm be there uh, in the abdominal aorta? Which all are the common sites? Suprarenal, hmm. uh, renal, uh, suprarenal, renal or pararenal. pararenal. Then? Mo infrarenal. Infrarenal is the most common cause that is that will come in more than 80 percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we have this patient with 
പ്രസൻ്റ്ലി ഡയഗ്നോസ്ഡ് ആസ് റപ്ചർഡ് അയോ ഇൻഫ്രാറീലൻ അയോട്ടിക് അനൂറിസം വിത്ത് പ്രസൻറ്റ് ബി പി എസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ഡയഗ്നോസിസ് Uh, we airways we, patent, patent breathing is now the circulation is a problem mm. so we maintain the permissive hypotension we mm. uh, maintain mm. uh, if the patient is going to do severe hypotension we can start inotropes uh, to mm. maintain permissive hypotension mm. so what is permissive hypotension uh, bp to maintain a um, map more than 65 mm uh, mm. normally our target is to ta- uh, maintain a map more than 65 mm mm-hmm. why to increase perfusion or per- to get per- no, perfusion. organ perfusion but this is a case of abdominal trauma so abdominal organs visceral organs require only very low mean arterial pressure that means between 55 to 60 is only required for them to get perfused so a permissive hypertension is mostly indicated in case of an abdominal trauma or a bleed like this this in any gi bleed or perforated bleed or a ab- uh, aortic dissection such cases if there is a associated um, Uh, IC bleed or something we can't do permissive hypertension mm. so since it is an abdominal bleed our target map is only between 55 to 60 okay so if uh, so this patient we need only that much so we don't want to increase the bp more than this so unnecessarily we don't want to give any fluids or any inotropes it's with the systolic bp of 100 mm. if the systolic bp is 80 also it is accepted if it is going less than 80 only we will have to mm. intervene so a map between 55 to 60 and a systolic bp of 80 is accepted mm. and uh, so uh, what else will you do then we arrange blood products Mm. So first we will have to insert two large bore IV okay. cannulas because while the BP is dropping we might not be able to see the vein mm-hmm. so two large bore IV cannulas should be uh, arranged mm-hmm. then we will have uh, should be placed and we will have to take the samples for cross matching uh, blood group cross matching mm-hmm. and what will be the definitive management for this patient surgery, surgery. surgery. so all pre op no investigations or everything should be done blood group cross matching also should be done along with that we will have to arrange for blood products mm-hmm. while taking the blood samples itself we will have to send all pre op investigations uh, along with the ptinr pre op serology all these things blood group cross matching and also uh, arrange for blood the blood products, products. so we'll have to arrange for uh, uh, packed blood cells mm-hmm. platelets and also ffp also that is regarding the cannulation part then we have the bp which we have already discussed then what about the heart rate heart rate uh, uh, normally when heart rate is increasing we can give injection like beta blockers like beta blockers so uh, in a case of ruptured aortic aneurysm uh, our target heart rate is less than 80 mm-hmm. normally uh, 100 is more than 100 tachycardia. is called as tachycardia but here we want the heart rate to be less than 80 why Uh, increasing heart rate also leads to loss of blood by ruptured okay. aneurysm so it is a pulsating artery mm-hmm. so it if it pulsates more it will bleed mm-hmm. more so we want a heart rate less than 80 mm-hmm. so in order for reducing the heart rate the ideal drug of choice is beta blockers okay so what can be used labetalol injection mm-hmm. labetalol can be used but labetalol can reduce the blood pressure also mm-hmm. metoprolol metoprolol can be used then esmolol esmolol can be so what is the dose of metoprolol which can use uh, 5 mg F- mm, 5 IV. mg iv esmolol uh, you can use uh, 0.2 uh, 2.5 mg per kg esmolol can be used or if you are starting as an esmolol infusion you can start 0.025 to 0.05 maximum mg per kg infusion can be started okay Uh, when will you use labetalol uh, high bp with uh, ah, high blood tachycardia with high, high blood BP. pressure you can give labetalol okay so mostly we are using labetalol in our ed so mm. w- what is the uh, labetalol dose which we will use uh, 20 mm. 20 mg how is lab- 
How is Labatilla available? It is available as a it is an ampule. It is available as an ampule. How much will one ampule of labetilol contain? 20 mg. 20 mg. Labetilol, uh, how much ml will be there? 4 ml. 4 ml will, it is a 4 ml uh, ampule which will contain 10 m, uh, 20 mg of labetilol. Okay. So, initial dose you can give that one ampule fully, you can give. If the patient is having tachycardia with high BP, you can give labetilol 20 mg. Then when will you reassess the BP? In 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you will reassess the BP. And again, you can give 20 mg. So, what is the maximum dose of labetilol which you can give as a... 300 mg, 24 maximum dose. Yeah, 300 mg can be given as a maximum dose. So, uh, but we can't reassess like this continuously. So, to get tight control of the BP, uh, you can start as a infusion. infusion. So, how will you take infusion? So, one thing we need to note is that when we are starting on infusion, most of the infusions we will be giving the drug along with normal saline. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Whereas, when you are starting furosemide infusion or if you are starting labetilol infusion, we won't be diluting it with normal saline. We will be giving only the injection as such. So, for starting labetilol, we are not diluting it. So, labetilol, we told that one ampule will contain 4 ml 20 mg. So, similarly, you will have to take four more, uh, total four ampules. So, it will be total 16 ml. Mm. 16 ml, uh, each containing 20 mg each. Mm. So, you will have to take a 20 cc syringe and in that you will have to take the 16 ml. Mm. Okay. And our target, uh, so how will you write a infusion order, labetrola infusion order? 25% decreased the way that is stored. Um, no, I 20 mg is the stat dose which you are giving. Infusion, how will you write the order as? How will you start infusion? Yeah. 1 mg per minute is the infusion. Uh, usually we will be starting. 1 mg per minute. Okay. So 1 mg per minute, how will you start? You will have to convert it into hour. Because our uh, infusion pumps are set based on hours. So 1 mg per minute. Uh, when you are converting into hours, how much it will be? 60 mg per hour. 60 mg per hour. So, 60 mg means 60 divided by 4. Because each mg means uh, one, 4 mg will, con 4 ml will contain 20 mg. So, uh, how much will uh, 1 ml contain? So, you can, uh, so, we want 60 mg per hour. So, divided by 4. So, you can 12 ml per hour you can start as an infusion. So, we are not diluting it. We are straightforward taking 4 ampules and we are starting it as an infusion. So, 1 mg per minute is equal to 60 mg per hour which is equal to 12 ml per hour. Okay. And if you want we can increase based on that. So, you can increase from 1 mg per minute to 2 mg per minute. So, from 12, 24, yes. like that, you can increase the infusion. Okay. So, this patient only heart rate control is required as mm. far as now because uh, anyway, BP is in a dropping mm. phase. So, we will control the heart rate. Okay. Then anything else? Mm. Then what happened to this patient? Uh, then we... Mm informed the vascular surgeon and the GI surgery uh, doctors mm. Mm. then uh, we monitored for definitive the, repair uh, okay definitive repair. when we monitored the patient in a GCS drop mm. so anyway pre definitive treatment is uh, surgery Surgical. Mm. so we intubate the uh, patient mm. why do you think this patient was intubated uh, BP is uh, dropping mm. uh, and HB also dropping we again do a point of care HB is 11 to 8 so, if so HB is dropping, we can give blood. VP mm -hmm. mm. is dropping, so and ongoing uh, bleeding is there. Mm. Doing intubation is correct only, but the indication is because uh, this patient is having a losing blood. Mm. So, a patient might be anxious and mm. the patient's metabol basal metabolic rate will increase. Mm. So, if we sedate, paralyze and intubate the patient, that will be helpful for the OT one thing. Mm. More than that, we can reduce the patient's basal metabolic rate. Mm. 
through intubation that is the main indication for intubation other than that there is a, there is no airway problem or mm. anything else no uh, sometimes gcs can drop in this patient mm. by hypertension uh, because of hypertension of reduce separate. blood flow to the brain or if there is any aneurysm of the ascending yes. aorta causing a stroke that uh, in such cases also gcs can drop mm. okay so main indication in this patient as of now patients gcs hasn't dropped then the only indication is to reduce the basal metabolic rate okay and mm. and what happened to this patient and uh, surgically uh, corrected the patient with uh, and this patient was immediately shifted, shifted to the to definitive yeah, management yeah. that is ot so did you understand what is the main management the er yes. the heart rate bp control and the arrangement of the blood products yeah. and starting off with the um, two large bore iv cannulas and vascular consultation okay suppose a patient comes with abdominal pain and you are finding that the, uh, there is uh, abdominal aorta aneurysm not yeah. ruptured what will you do uh incidental finding if the mm. aneurysm is less than 5.5 cm mm. uh we just uh, regular follow up is needed mm. uh, if the more than 5.5 cm what is a normal aorta size uh, 3 cm uh, so normally infrarenal part if you are uh, taking infrarenal part itself in females it is less than 1.5 cm and males it is uh, uh, approximately 1.5 cm in females and males it is 1.7 cm okay so if it is uh, enlarging then that means it is called as an ectatic aorta mm -hmm. okay if it is more than 3 cm we tell that it is uh, it is having an aneurysm okay so uh, if it is enlarging more than 5.5 then we can do a def um, surgery mm -hmm. the elective surgery mm -hmm. can be planned or one more indication is there expansion by 1 cm in every uh, year yeah. also indication yeah so if the patient uh, initially when we check and the uh, aorta size was 4.5 cm we can reassess we can't wait for one more year mm -hmm. we can reassess after 6 months. months if it is increasing more than 0.5 cm then also we can plan on a surgery mm -hmm. or if the patient is having a size uh, less than or equal to uh, 5.5 and if the patient is always symptomatic then also you can plan for a mm. surgery that is based on an elective based mm. surgery okay anything else mm. uh, crawford classic coselli classification of uh, thoracic abdominal aortic aneurysm mm. in type 1 only suprarenal part of the aorta is involved type 2 uh, entire um, thoracic or descending abdominal aorta involved up to bifurcation type 3 is distal half of the uh, thoracic aorta is involved type 4 entire infradiaphragmatic portion of descending aorta is involved okay okay uh, how else can an aorta abdominal aortic aneurysm or the rupture can present to a ready uh, severe acute onset of abdominal uh, pain mm. with uh, multiple episode of vomiting okay uh, Uh, in a renal part, it, uh, if uh, renal artery is already involved, then patient present with decreased urine output. Mm. Uh, or Mostly they can come with backache. Backache mm. complaint can be there. Mm. Or there can be, this aneurysm is there. there they, it can cause fistulas with the oh, bowel vessels. Aortal enteral fistula. Aortal enteral fistulas can be. So, yeah, they can come with melina hematochesia. Mm. Or they can cause some fistulas with the vessel supplying the vertebra mm. and the spinal cord. That can, such patients can come with lower limb weakness. Any neurological weakness can be there for that patients. And if it is uh, involving the upper part, the thoracic part, what else can be there? Chest pain. Uh, Chest pain can be there. They they are prone, for, so such patients, patients who are having syndromes like Marfan syndrome, mm -hmm. Erlodilo syndrome, such patients are prone for having, uh, uh, if there is any bicuspid aortic valve and all, they are mm -hmm. prone for having aortic regurgitation and all. Mm -hmm. So that can be there. Obsession, dyspnea. Those symptoms can be there, and if this, if it is involving the ascending aorta and involving the carotids, this such patients can come with acute stroke also. Mm -hmm. If it is involving the thoracic aorta, okay. So these are the other presentations of abdominal aortic aneurysm. So don't think that all elderly with abdominal pain only can have this thing. Other manifestations can also be there. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.